Good afternoon. It is Sunday, 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 May 8th, 2022. It is currently 25 degrees Celsius outside. Translate to Fahrenheit if you wish. I don't even know why I said Celsius, but that's what I have going on. Stu Grayson is leaving AEW. Fast 10 directors have swapped over, and EVE Online and XL have formed a big brand partnership. All that and more with your carry and comfort news for today. But before we go into the news, I have some very special announcements. Also want to give a big shout out. Thank you for joining us today on this uh, very blessed Mother's Day. Uh, for those that celebrate, for those that who, who do not celebrate for various reasons, uh, I am thinking of you. I hope that you have as good as a day as you possibly can, whether or not you're spending time with family or if there are unforeseen circumstances that are keeping you from doing so. So I just wanted to go ahead and give a very special shout out for that. I also want to give a very special shout out to our sponsors, starting with Calo. Calo Energy is a game-focused plant-based supplements company that we have partnered with uh, and that I use in my personal daily life, whether it's Q-Focus that helps me stay focused when I'm playing video games or I'm working on overlays or doing some video editing, or it's Q-Energy powdered energy drinks that give me a boost without a crash like most energy drinks on the market. Calo has me and you covered. Uh, be sure to check out all of their wide products at the uh, Calo logo down below as well as here in the chat at this link right there and if you go to that link or you use code comfort at checkout you get 10 percent off of your order and that's every order that's not just the first order that is every single order speaking of getting 10 percent off of your order we go to dice envy if you're ever looking to grab some dice to fill your coffers then consider using our referral link in chat and in our about section if you just hit their link down below it'll take you right to their website to grab a very special set of dice from dice envy just for you or as a gift for others. Dice Envy provides high quality handcrafted dice at a very reasonable price, but they just don't offer uh, dice. They also provide dice trays, dice bags, and more. Code Comfort at checkout will get you 10% off of all of your orders, not just your first order. It's a deal. It's a steal. It's going to cover your taxes and your shipping. So go ahead and check that out right there. Exclamation point Envy. As well, Moving over to 1985 Games. 1985 Games are the creators of Dungeon Craft, an affordable way to upgrade campaigns from hand-drawn maps to stunning visual worlds. Unlike many terrain solutions on the market, Dungeon Craft is priced to allow any gamer to upgrade their campaign with over a thousand cutout pieces without having to spend the equivalent of a dragon's horde. Use our link in the chat or in the about section. Check them out for new battle mats, miniatures, uh, and their new deck of stories. Speaking of deck of stories, coming up this week, they are having a special sale where every single one of their deck of stories and booster packs are going to be $5 each, which is just an incredible steal. Uh, we have a special going on right now that during our Kingdom Hearts finales, if we hit an average of 30 viewers, I'm going to give away some of these special booster packs here. We've got Hell, if you're running an Avernus campaign. We've got an NPC pack right there that just has a bunch of different NPC ideas right there. And then we've also got the Gears collection, if you're running something in Eberron or something steampunk or diesel punk adjacent. So go ahead and check out 1985 Games. Uh, what is up, Dimples and Dice? You are just in time. We had just done the announcements. We had just done our ads. And we are ready to dive in to today's news. Kicking off right now with something that I never thought I would ever have to talk about or see. But CCP Games wants to help smaller EVE Online players manage their data like the big dogs. During a keynote of this weekend's EVE Fan Fest convention in Reykjavik, Iceland, creative director Berger van Bogesen previewed an upcoming collaboration between the MMO, EVE Online, and Microsoft's Excel spreadsheet program in front of a crowd of dedicated fans. A lot of diehards and a lot of fans of EVE Online have always joked that you need spreadsheets to be able to run and manage EVE Online. So a lot of people took it as a joke when Finn Bogusen was on the stage and clicked over to a slide introducing the developer CCP Games partnership with Microsoft XL. But that laughter soon turned to applause when he showed exactly what they have in store for players. Finn Bogusen has explained that his team is interested in bridging the knowledge and budget gaps between new players and those who have played EVE Online long enough to establish corporations and alliances within its vast universe. 
Finn Bogason has been quoted as saying, Data is massively important to many advanced playstyles in EVE, and by simplifying the access to data for all, we will level the playground when it comes to the tools of the sandbox. With Microsoft, we're building an extension that will allow players to lock in and pull data directly from our game into Microsoft Excel. It's not April Fool's, he added, as a prototype demo played out behind him, just to make sure the crowd understood there was an elaborate prank. This is real. Now, the built-in tool is not going to make a day-old uh, day EVE Online players as experienced or knowledgeable as the de dedicated spacefarers that have been playing this game for a long, long time, but being on even footing when it comes to collating, managing, and comparing data should go a long way forward to making sure that your EVE Online experience is as manageable and you're not as overwhelmed as you used to be. It is still an early in development, but CC game, CCP Games plans to share more later this year. I personally think that it is about time that, yeah, exactly, EVE is officially becoming spreadsheets online. There is nothing, there is nothing stopping them now. Uh, they are too powerful. They're going forward. Uh, I, for one, think this is hilarious. I think it's a, also a fantastic idea. You might as well play into it. Um, I used to play EVE online way back in the gap, and then I realized how much money I was uh, pl uh, spending on it, and so I quickly, quickly had to stop. Um, I... This is fantastic, and, and uh, there is a video that has gone around of the stream where people just start chuckling when they, 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 they see that he's talking about Excel, but they start cheering as soon as like he's like, no, this is, this is actual real thing, this is actually happening. Um, so I, it's certain that a lot of the EVE Online community is very excited about that. Two. Uh, since I do not have any of my other co-hosts or anything today, uh, we're going to be going through news a bit faster. Uh, but, you know, feel free to drop in the chat any questions, any comments. I love bouncing off of people, talking with people, things of that nature. I like having something similar to a life and EVE Online doesn't like that. Yes, EVE Online, you cannot have a life when it comes to EVE Online. You have to dedicate your whole entire fucking... Uh, you're, yeah, you're, you're, all your waking days... Um, to that to that moving on to more video game related news something bad is happening over in the board ape yacht club the year-old nft collection owned by blockchain tech firm yuga labs they seem to be happening almost bad things seem to be happening almost daily in the nft sphere and the cryptocurrency community at large which are both unfortunately frequent targets of multi-million dollar hacking initiatives and equally expensive scammy hijinks Yuga Labs most recently contributed to the Blood in the Water with its other deed for Other Side Collection, which was an NFT-related gaming initiative which saw buyers paying thousands of dollars in failed transactions and later becoming targets to scams. On OpenSea, Yuga Labs described its other deed collection as the key to claiming land in the game Other Side. Other Side, a play-to-earn gaming project supported by the ApeCoin token, uh, it has been described as a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, there, there are, but there are uh, very few publicly available details on other side, which was intended to launch in April, but has not yet materialized. Some reports have been throwing around the word metaverse, but from other sides fairly obtuse, though it's a very high production trailer, it's unclear what exactly the project will entail, aside from bringing together holders of NFTs of varying origins like CryptoPunks and World of Women, in addition to Bay C. A lot of these games are pending. We are not seeing any kind of materialization of actual proper gameplay from these games. We are just seeing a lot of hype being brought up and updates coming from uh, Yuga Labs. Uh, Yuga Labs said, We are aware that some users have failed transactions due to the incredible demand being forced through Ethereum's bottleneck. For those of you affected, we appreciate your willingness to build alongside us. Know that we've got your back and we will be refunding your gas. On May 4th, Yuga Labs announced that it had refunded gas fees to everyone who made a transaction that failed due to network conditions caused by the Mint. Multiple replies indicate that not everyone has received a refund, however, and just to really smash Bay C fans' faces into the ground, a fake other side website has conned some uh, Bored Ape holders out of NFTs valued at $6.2 million. A lot of these other DD NFTs, they look like elaborate Minecraft blocks. Uh, the art reinforces the idea that buyers are nabbing land plots with their purchase, though we don't know how relevant land ownership is to other sides' gameplay as the project goes on. We do know that the descriptions of these artifacts, these 
Images are described as an N resource, an E resource, a W resource, an S resource, and Coda, though nobody knows exactly what these resources mean because the game is not out yet. In spite of the huge financial losses that we're seeing from NFTs, including some that we're going to talk about in this next news story that's coming up, uh, Other Deed Collection continues to see sales. According to the NFT ranking site CryptoSlam, Other Deed has generated Yugo Labs over $791 million, approximately, getting close to $792 million, which equals to 271425 Ethereum in sales so far. On the official other side Twitter, the conversation seems to be dominated by people talking about their codas and how some of them can fart. Nature is healing. Nature is healing. So once again, we are seeing it has been a downward trend. It is a downward sloping trend, and we are seeing it skyrocketing, plummeting down into the ground. It seems that NFTs are on their way out, and people are just holding on to hope that maybe, just maybe, that is not the case, but it seems to not be so much. So much, in fact, that our next story involves Square Enix. Square Enix has got rid of big properties, the, the rights to big properties like the Avengers license and Tomb Raider at a fire sale at the exact worst time because, as you know, nobody makes bad business deals like Square Enix. So, the NFT market is flatlining. It is down 92% from where it was last September, which makes it the most incredible time for Japanese publisher Square Enix to gamble on a batshit, absolutely cuckoo bananas scheme. They are tending to sell Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal to the monolithic The Embracer Group, along with IPs for games like Deus Ex, Tomb Raider, Thief, and Legacy of Kane. Why? Because to quote Squeenix, the transaction enables the launch of new businesses by moving forward with investments in field, including the blockchain, AI, and the cloud. Which is to say, they are doubling down on their previous announcement to milk the NFT blockchain market to make Squeenix-related games like that. So, what does this mean? This means that Square Enix is getting a lot, rid of a lot of their flagship titles and giving it to this massive, massive, like, embracer group to be able to hold on to these and now they get to decide what happens with these different um, different uh, titles like Deus Ex, which is a favorite of mine, as well as Tomb Raider. And they've sold the ga video game rights to the Avengers, which we're probably going to be seeing folded back into Disney soon. It's wild because they are doubling down on this when, like we said, 92% percentage down since last September when NFTs started gathering Stream, steam, steam, steam. A lot of other publishers have betted on this one-legged horse, not just Square Enix, but it seems that Ubisoft, Sega, Team 17, Zombie Atari, Konami, and GameStop have all hedged their bets on this dying field, this dying kind of fad, would it seem, a grift. Uh, NFTs are always going to be a bubble, and no doubt they'll have little spikes, resurgences of interest with each new nonsensical twist, reaching nowhere near as high as 2021's, but allowing the true believers to keep duping themselves and others for a while to come. But let's hope this news of a market collapse is finally enough to scare the games industry away from the ludicrous money pit. It seems that when trying to find a quote from Square Enix about what they feel about this market collapsing soon and them getting into it way too late. They are not saying anything. So as we can probably see, uh, Square Enix has made a bad, bad decision. Once again, I'm not surprised. It happens often. Speaking of strange decisions, Family Guy and the King of the Hill characters are being the focal point of a new Kart Racer that is set in the Fox animated universe. Fox's adult animated programming are, are, are developing a new game called Warped Kart Racers. It is a mobile video game that features characters from the shows of King of the Hill, Family Guy, The Simpsons, Fa uh, American Dad, and Bob's Burgers. Most of these kart racers and these kind of like Smash Bros related games have been focused on cartoon characters like those from Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney, and Smash Brothers from Nintendo, but Fox has decided to throw their own 
hats into the ring, though albeit not in a AAA title, but in a mobile free-to-play game. Uh, Fox and developer Electric Square are going to be releasing this game later this month on the Apple Arcade. It is going to feature more than 16 different racetracks and have 8-player multiplayer with controller support on it. As of now, we do not have any confirmation on who the characters might be. Uh, specifically, we don't have all of them, but we do know that it will feature some of the characters like Peter Griffin. It will have Homer Simpson. It will have Stan from American Dad. Uh, and you will also be seeing uh, uh, Hank and Bobby Hill from King of the Hill. Uh, it does sound like a waste of money. This does sound like a huge waste of money. I mean, it's a mobile game. That I mean, that's like 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 what what do you what are you gonna expect from a mobile game? Um, it's gonna be a money sink. Uh, I am uh, looking at this right now. These are all the characters that are confirmed in the game so far. So you're gonna have Bobby Hill, Peggy Hill, Hank Hill, uh, and then you're also okay. They've got these so out of order. Uh, okay, perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have Peggy Hill, Luann Platter, Hank Hill, Dale Gribble, and Bobby Hill as the characters from, uh, from King of the Hill. You're going to have Peter, Meg, uh, Lois, Stewie, and Brian Griffin from Family Guy. You're going to have Francine, Haley, uh, Roger, Stan and Steve from American Dad. Uh, and then you are going to have Terry, the Poopa, Yumulak, uh, and Jesse and Corvo from Solar Opposites. Uh, so right now, this is what we have known of what characters are going to be involved with Warped Kart Racers. It is going to have just the starting 20 characters, but they are going to allow to have more that can be unlockable at a later date. That joint sounds like a flash game. Exactly, it sounds like a flash game. What if this game is locate like low key mechanically deep? What if we are seeing like at the next like big like game tournaments and stuff like that instead of Mario Kart and stuff like that? We're seeing like professional warped kart racer, like gamer. You know, it's kind of strange. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, which is like to say that like you know like I was all on board for. Um, I was all on board for like you know the big like Nickelodeon brawlers, the uh, the the multiverse fighting game, uh, Smash Brothers style fighting game that's coming from Warner Brothers, where you can play as Steven Universe, Jake and Finn from Adventure Time, Arya Stark, Gandalf, as well as Batman and more. Um, I'm very excited for this, but I think when you're putting in an investment like this, I think it's much much better to try to put an investment with a, an actual game as opposed to a uh, free to play game. What's the tier list gonna look like? Says the fight saying so octopus. That's what I want to know. Like I want to know like how the balancing is gonna work in this game and things of that nature. It is it is absolutely wild. It's out of this world. Um, it's only on Apple phones. I've got a Google Pixel, so like I'm not gonna be able to participate in this madness. But if y'all have an Apple, please, please do uh, try to download this obvious uh, grab at money, and uh, then go ahead and let us know exactly uh, what you think about this game. That is all I have for a lot of the big tier gaming news from today. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and move it on over to uh, Keep It Kayfabe. This is all of your wrestling news that is happening going on today. So um, uh, starting off, the big, big uh, gotcha game with different star versions of the characters. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the tier list, it's going to be like different outfits. They're definitely going to have different outfits and things of that nature. Uh, they're probably going to throw in the chicken from Family Guy as a playable character at some point. Things of that nature. But yeah, moving on to wrestling news. The big news stories today that Stu Grayson, a wrestler from AEW and a member of the Dark Order's AEW contract, has expired. Yesterday, as to quote Dave Meltzer from Wrestling Observer News, Stu Grayson was removed from the roster page, and the story that I'm getting is his contract expired, which is the same as Marco Stunt, Joey Janela, and Jack Evans, whose names were removed from the roster page because their contracts have expired. Dave Meltzer likes to repeat, for, repeat a lot of words. Uh, he is not a great writer. The only word kind of going around is that they failed to come to terms on a new agreement. I don't know. Yeah. 
I don't know if that means they're still talking or if that's one of the decisions made not to renew him. I can see it in the sense they have so many guys on the roster and he's been there for three years and there's just so many guys. But on the flip side, Joey Janela wanted out. Marco Sunt kind of wasn't used anymore. He was going on to The Voice. He's going to be a member. He's going to be a cast member on The Voice and competing on The Voice this new season. Jack Evans was good, but the thing with Stu Grayson is in the ring. The guy's great, but he wasn't a guy that got over great. But as a technical wrestler, he was really, really good. I agree with Dave Meltzer on that. He had been with AEW since 2019 when he debuted with the Dark Order as Evil Uno's uh, tag team partner. He and Evil Uno were members of the Super Smash Bros. as Player Uno and Player Two. Um, and they are a fantastic tag team. I wish we would have seen more for them, even a tag team title run. But that was not in the cards. Stu Grayson on May 6th dropped a, uh, an, a, an update on a situation. He said, he tweeted out, on April 30th, my contract with AEW expired. Best of luck to everyone working for AEW, our great production and medical team, and of course, every man and woman who steps into the ring. And to my Dark Order family, I hope the world will soon see what you are truly capable of. Reports are coming in from internally as well as that he was going to renew his contract, but he could not come to terms that with uh with facts that kind of he could not come to terms on a uh, on a on a contract with the payment that he felt fit for him uh he was one of the original AEW guys he was getting paid very well but he figured since he was one of the originals and they had a bunch of new stars coming in for him to have his experience and his time being there with the company he deserved more money and you know what good for him and it seems what we're seeing with these releases because i've seen a lot of like e-drones a lot of wwe purists uh, coming out and saying, oh, you give shit for WWE for their releases, but you're not, you know, giving the kind of, like, uh, same kind of energy for AEW on their releases. The difference between AEW and WWE's releases is WWE are just cutting these people, cutting their contracts mid-contract and just firing them and throwing them to the wolves, while AEW is allowing these people's contracts to expire. So that even if they're not showing up on TV like Marco Stunt, they are still getting paid their amount until their contract expires with an ability to renegotiate. If they don't wish to, they can move on forward, go wrestle somewhere else. And it has been stated by Tony Khan and multiple others within uh, AEW's management that with these contracts expiring, that is not the end of them working together. They can work on a uh, paid-per-match kind of deal, like what Peter Avalon is doing right now with uh, AEW Dark and sometimes the occasional Dynamite. Um, or there's always an open door for them to come back and work with the company beforehand. Tony Khan believes in having an open door policy with a lot of his wrestlers. And so, you know, if you, if you want to go, you know, see what you have down the road at another business, another wrestling company promotion, go ahead and check it out. If you want to come back, you're always welcome. And I think that is the best way to run your company, especially when you're working with independent contractors like wrestlers. Um, e drones, yeah, that's yeah, the, the entertainment drones, uh, all those, all those, all those weirdos. But yeah, best of luck to Sue Grayson, uh, one of the most fantastic uh, technical wrestlers I've had the pleasure of seeing live. Uh, if you want to see a fantastic match, go ahead and uh, check out. Let's see, there is a ladder match uh, between Super Smash Brothers. Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole versus the Young, Bru Young Bucks. Uh, it is with a Pro Wrestling Gorilla. I'm going to go ahead and drop a link. This is the highlights to it. But if you can watch the full match, go ahead and check it out. It is one of the best three triple threat tag team ladder matches. That's a mouthful that I've ever seen in my fucking life. Uh, it's absolutely wild. Uh, go ahead and check that out. Speaking of absolutely wild and checking out, Freddie Prince Jr., of the Scooby-Doo movies fame, as well as various other movies like She's All That and doing the voice of a very, very laconic Jedi, also who has very popular opinions, or unpopular opinions, depending on how you are, on Star Wars. Freddie Prince Jr. has announced that he is starting his own wrestling promotion. He has plans to start within the next 18 months. He wants it to be a two-hour show. He has the money for a three-year plan. He wants storylines based in reality. He wants men and women given equal time on the cards. He wants to own the space that it's filmed in. He wants it to be a Screen Actors Guild supported show, so union supported with health insurance and everything of that nature. And he doesn't have an idea for a TV contract yet, but 
he wants it to be open to the future for somebody else. If you're not familiar with Freddie Prince Jr. and his history with wrestling, Freddie Prince Jr. used to be a writer for Friday Night SmackDown, specifically handing, handling storylines with Triple H and others. So he has he's been a longtime fan of professional wrestling. He has his hand in professional wrestling. He's known the business for a while. So a lot of people, when they heard this news, they're like, what? Fucking Fred from Scooby-Doo wants to take care of a wrestling promotion? No way. But it seems like he's got a lot of good plans under his belt. Uh, he's been quoted. He went on Wrestling with Freddie podca podcast, uh, which is his, his podcast that he has where he talks about his time and experience being a WWE creative, as well as talking about other new wrestling news. Yeah, he knows the – yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he knows the biz exactly. Uh, he said he revealed that plans are starting to fall in place for organization. He said, I started looking at arenas locally in the Los Angeles area and what it would cost to rent them. And then as I saw what my opportunities would be in this business, as there would be more of them after I did the Netflix uh, holiday rom-com movie that's currently untitled, I started saying, well, I can accelerate this plan. I can keep the plan as it is, do a couple more of these Netflix movies, and own the space, which I believe right now is a plan I'm going to execute. He has a commercial realtor that he knows and loves. She's looking at properties for him, and he would love to have a full-time home for this. It was originally a two-year plan, but he sees it happening with the money investments and looking for investors to be a three-year plan. Um, he's not hiring any wrestlers or musicians, even though some have reached out to him. Uh, but he said, if you want, uh, so it, uh, if your friends ask you the story is true, you tell them yes, and then you send them the link to this episode so you don't have to have this 30-minute explanation all the time. Uh, he has an 18 month plan. Uh, there's a way for him to get done sooner, but he has to go to Australia for three months and leave his family. I don't know why he has to go to Australia for this, but it's wild. Uh, he said, if you don't think that I'm serious, let me not let you know. I've already purchased a used arena light kit. It was used as an arena kit for a pro wrestling gorilla show it, and used, even used, these mugs are expensive. I want this to look legit. So it's literally sitting in my storage unit because my man was telling me this dude was selling at a really good price. If you want to get on this. So I did. Wow. So just to let you know, he's very, very serious about this. Uh, Freddie notes that he had b brought unionizing up with the WWE superstars when he worked at the company, but he received the same answer every time that Triple H wouldn't go for it. B Prince Jr. believes when Vince McMahon sells WWE, the wrestlers should start thinking about their futures. He's quoted as saying, the goal is to get them all unionized, which is a huge deal. I would support all wrestlers to go after it. It won't happen under Vince's rule, but I believe when the WWE sells, that should be the very first thing that every single wrestler should have on the forefront of their goal list is to unionize. Day one, it should be a walkout. The day they sell the company, the day they sell it to whoever the new ownership is, every wrestler should be like, good luck. We want unionization. We want fair representation. Uh, shout out Freddie Prince Jr., who knew that the uh, that the star of She's All That would be a real, real homie like that? Um, yeah, yeah, mostly just because of the investment. That's extra as fuck. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's how you know he's, like, actually serious about this because he's buying a full arena light kit, which those motherfuckers are expensive because you have, oh, the amount of gobos and the amount of, like, tracking, like, lights you have and everything like that. Absolutely wild. Uh that's not going to have. I'd love to see it, but it ain't. Yeah, WWE. Cause that, I mean, we know, we all know who WWE is going to be sold to. It's not going to be sold to anybody that's like, you know, super awesome, super rad, anything like that. Uh, it's going to be sold. It, it, it's going to be sent to. It's going to be sold to Nick Khan. It's not going to be sold to anybody. Like, we already know how this is going, and that's not happening. But you know what? I wish Freddie Prince Jr. all the luck in running this new promotion. I love to see new promotions. I love to see new business ventures hop out, especially for people that are passionate, especially where we've seen a lot of great wrestling. Um, we, we've seen a lot of great wrestling um, promotions uh, get led astray by bad owners and bad bookers. Uh, Shikara Wrestling comes to mind with their owner, as well as Bar Wrestling with Redacted, Joey Ryan. Um, so we've seen a lot of great wrestling shows get thrown to the wayside because of bad ownership. And I hope that Freddie Prince Jr. can do right by uh, his, the people that are going to be working with him. Seeing that he has the Screen Actors Guild uh, involved, he wants, to be in, he wants all of his wrestlers, he wants all of his wrestlers to be a member of SAG. He wants them to be entitled to health insurance and medical benefits and retirement plans. So it seems like he's trying to take care of these people. I wish him all the luck. I can't wait to see what comes of it. Uh, wild. Absolutely wild. Who would have thought? 
Uh, and uh, a little bit on our final. Uh, I don't want to see Impact get a new name every year, a few years anymore. I agree. I completely agree. I don't want to see Impact go through TNA, Impact, fucking Rock'em Shock'em Robots, however you want to fucking call it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, our last little bit of wrestling news before we move on to tabletop news. Candice LeRae's WWE deal has expired as of May 6th at 9.50 a.m. It has been re retorted that WWE has one less royal family for them to rely on, as the couple of Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae are both free agents in, wrestling, uh, in the wrestling field. Fightful News has reported that LeRae's deal was up in the spring. There was no indication of an extension at that point. The mo this morning, or May 6th morning, LeRae was added to the alumni section of WWE.com, and uh, we were able to check with WWE sources to current that she is actually a free agent. Candice LeRae's husband, Johnny Gargano, also known as Johnny Wrestling, left the company in December and hasn't wrestled since, but has started doing signings at different wrestling fests, fan events, and conventions. The two had just had their first child in February, and LeRae had remained on television for several months before taking off for maternity leave. There were talks of an extension, but there was no knowing of how it was going to land. Uh, the decision to freeze the contract during maternity leave would have been in her court, but nobody was given an indication that that was the case. There are not 90-day non-competes attached to contracts expiring, specifically with N NXTs. This leaves Indy Hartwell as the only remaining member of The Way, which was a former, uh, which was a former stable that included Johnny Gargano, Austin Theory, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell on the NXT roster. Not only has Indy Hartwell lost her uh, wrestling mom and dad of Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae, but she's also lost her husband, Dexter Loomis, to NXT cuts. Um, there is no ill will be, be retorted between WWE and Gargano, uh, and also LeRae and WWE. Uh, the company looked upon Gargano well for putting over talent on the way out of the company and helping establish others, then doing a short extension to make sure that things ended well. Uh, they have been given an open door of returning whenever they choose to, but you know what? Uh, oh, Impact did sign Mia, Mia Yim. Yes, 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 Mia Yim is now officially with Impact Wrestling. I'm very excited for her. I can't wait to see what the head bitch in charge does over there at Impact. Yeah, they didn't hold her hostage while she was pregnant, pregnant, and they, they, they seemed that they took care of her. Uh, that's your hometown couple, Dibbles and Dice, so you're happy for them. Yes, I, I have all, I've been a major fan of Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano. They do a fantastic, fantastic in-ring and out-of-ring work, and I'm so, so very thankful to see them as free agents. I would love to see them do a couple of intergender, ma inter intergender wrestling matches, maybe with GCW uh, once they're ready. Uh, potentially, you know, do some stuff with Prestige Wrestling, uh, Defy Wrestling, PWG, you know, go ahead and do the, the indie tour. Have them show up on uh, AEW TV. Start building towards an indie, like, you know, you know, start building that, that kind of, I want AEW to start having, like, an open door policy with, like, free agents and stuff like that. Like, if you want to come wrestle on the show, we'll pay you, bring you on, things of that nature. I think it would be a really good deal for them. Uh, Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano are fantastic, fantastic wrestlers. I watch his stream, and they're on there all the time, putting you yeah, back in AIW for a, exactly. Yeah, go ahead and let them say hi to the hometown people and put on a couple of shows. I think it'd be great. They're both in their prime. Uh, they're both very, very fit and like good to wrestle, and like they fucking look great. So like, all the all the happiness for them. I hope to see them doing whatever they wish and whatever they're hoping to do. It's fantastic. So yeah, that is all the wrestling news that we have for today. If we have any more breaking news, we're going to be bringing it up. We will definitely retweet it. But we're going to make our way over to Table Talk RPG news. We don't have a lot with this. We only have about three. Uh, we only have about three stories right now. But the first is we are talking from, direct from Dicebreaker uh, from contributor Chase Carter. Primal Quest travels back to the Stone Age for an RPG full of dinosaurs, magics, and myths. A new pre prehistoric fantasy game. Uh, that is being uh, uh, being uh, released soon. It's called Primal Quest. It is the creation of Diego Nogueira, a Brazilian designer who wanted to create rules for what he described as weird stone and sorcery adventures instead of sword and sorcery. Everything takes place in the primal world of Thea, a planet quite similar to the Earth where early humans lived alongside dinosaurs and other strange peoples. Swamp dealing frog cultists, ancient forest protectors, and territorial apes who distrust their less 
hairy neighbors. Traveling across Thea means inviting danger at every step. Humans live in small tribes and largely trade among each other, but not all of them are ready to settle down and cooperate peacefully. The environment itself still shudders and groans with primal forces that might swallow whole villages without noticing. It would also reveal long-forgotten ruins and dark places of the earth, perhaps better left buried. Uh, the game uses a very straightforward system of six-sided dice pools. Positive dice represent advantages, boons, and favorable positioning, while negative dice are earned from conditions, environmental hazards, and the efforts of your foes. So it seems to be using a little bit of a variation of the fate system. When attempting to overcome a rated challenge, a player rolls that pool and subtracts the highest negative dice from the highest positive dice. If, after adding the appropriate attribute, the roll is higher than the target, that player succeeds. Either outcome is weighed by degrees, which can lead to near-death scrapes, or overwhelming victories. The groups of your players will only have access to wooden stone gear, but they can always augment their capabilities with magic, old and primal, that is always dangerous to use and always taxing on the wielder. This game is for groups who want to keep close track of supplies and encumbrance, who want their equipment to break at the most dire moments, and are prepared to meet death every time they step beyond the safety of a village. Primal Quest makes it clear that threats are not always meant to be faced with a club or spear in hand, and the unknowable earth may just reward uh, the, the inquisitive and cautious. The essential rules are currently available as a pay what you want to download on the game's itch page right here, if you want to go ahead and check it out right there. Uh, go ahead and check it out because I have definitely checked it out. Uh, I'm a, I absolutely love the idea of this game. I'm a big fan of like the uh, Adult Swim Tarkovsky show, uh, Primal, and it's just kind of giving me that vibes as well as Fire and Ice and uh, and some other stuff. Uh, it looks very very cool. Um, it sounds very interesting. Uh, the game uh, uses the Mother Veil Hex Crawl as an introductory adventure. A quick read-through shows a sheltered valley full of secrets, shimmering tensions, and plenty of supernatural occurrences that might not be of this world. Oh, and plenty and plenty of dinosaurs. I fucking love dinosaurs. Um, so right now, Nogiera is supporting the release of this Essential Rules with a compatibility license for any designer who wants to add to the prehistoric setting, along with a primal game jam to host community hacks and creations using the rule set. Printed copies will be available in the future through Exalted Funeral. A great, go ahead and check out Exalted Funeral. Great, great publisher that has a lot of great, interesting like games, especially o OSR stuff, a lot of metal stuff. Check it out. But no date has been given for printing. Uh, go ahead and check out Primal Quest. Uh, I uh, I already have it bookmarked. I have it wish listed on uh, on itch. So you know, go ahead and check that out. Go ahead and check that out. I'm also going to follow Diego Old School just to check that out. Uh, so, yeah, Primal Quest. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, next, uh, we have another new release. Thank you, Chase Carter from Dicebreaker, for rolling up all these announcements. Um, so, if you were a fan of Stephen King's long-crafted Weird West fantasy series, The Dark Tower, and no matter whether you think that it has been a success or a failure towards the ending— the story's strong Western imagery, memorable world building, and manipulation of time and space itself have left an impact on plenty of creators, and that is no news with this new crowdfunding tabletop RPG, We Deal in Lead. The latest title from Colin Lasore, who is known by Arden Odin's Beard RPG Online, We Deal in Lead attempts to capture the folkloric mystique and genre pulpiness of the gunslinger and its portrayal of wandering warriors and champions of a lost civilization. Armed with a revolver, and the conviction of their order, players will venture into the wastes where the barrier between this reality and the other worlds rub together and wear thin. The ending was great, and I'll hear no slander on it. I completely agree. I absolutely love the Dark Tower series. Uh, I have a lot of opinions on Stephen King, but the Dark Tower series is fantastic. I loved it. I think the ending is great. I love cyclical storytelling. It's amazing. Uh, so we deal in lead. The mechanics uh, are underpinned in this RPG, which can be played by yourself or with a group, derives from OSR, old school revival inspired rules of titles such as Knave, Into the Odd, and Cairn. Challenges use a roll under target rule and everything from combat to character creation is pared down to the essentials to prioritize actually playing the game and collaborative storytelling. It also boasts some signature design around wielding the mythic revolver that gives gunslingers their legendary reputations. I need some water. I am getting very thirsty hearing about this game. I want to run this on stream. The tales of the gunslinger and the dark tower have lived inside my head since I first read the novels in high school, as Zor wrote. 
A broken world, the last gunslinger on his quest to find the meaning of existence, his motley band of fellow gunslingers. There they stayed, locked away, ever so often bubbling up to the surface. Even if players choose to roam solo, We Deal Unlit allows them to recruit heroes from across the interconnected realities and befriend animal companions. Wolves, hawks, and bumblers, which is uh, King's take on raccoon dogs, are among the furry friends available. But a gunslinger is never truly alone. If they remember the teachings of their chosen order and can foster steadfast bonds with its other members, we must remember... Do not forget the face of your father. That way, if to those who forget the face of their father shall wander the wasteland with no direction. Given the soft approach to connected worlds borrowed from King's Own Universe, other adventures and settings built for Nave and its derivatives can be used with this game's rule set. This gives players access to plenty of one-off journeys or the opportunity to construct an extended campaign reaching across multiple worlds. We deal in lead as itch funding on itch.io, meaning development on the game will continue once certain earning thresholds are met. Lasor and the team on the game, including the editor Vi Huntsman and illustrators Goran Gilvovich and Kim Diaz Holm, are aiming for both a physical print run and digital copy. A work in progress, plain text version of the rules are available to read on their itch.io set. Can I just let you know, here it is. Long days and pleasant nights to you as well. Um, there it is. We deal in lead. That is our, uh, I'm actually going to be doing this on stream right now. Uh, we deal in lead. Yes, let me go ahead and fund this. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just going ahead and forcing this because I've got the old, the old, the old noggin is turning, you know? The old noggin is turning now. So, this is what we're doing. Booyah, booyah. You know, it's a great news show when you get your fucking host that's buying a fucking itch game right now to support it. Uh, I'm casting myself. You don't get a choice. No, 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 no. There was never another choice. There was never another choice. We're definitely... You know what? You know what? I'm going to tell you right now. We're going to do a stream of this on Carrying Comfort Studios, and it's going to be a four-person cast. It is going to be... It's going to be fucking me running the game. We're going to have Dimples and Dice and two other people uh, that we're going to bring on. You know what? I kind of want to make it a POC-dominant game as well. Uh... I'll be in contact with you, Dimples. I'll be in contact with you. But yeah, go ahead and check out We Deal in Lead. Go ahead and look at that itch funding right there. I went ahead and supported it. I absolutely had to. Uh, there was no other way for this to go. Uh, the art looks fucking fantastic. Um, like, it's currently an itch funding. They're so close to their goal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, so their next release, oh, they've hit a bunch. Of, so it's not no longer zine; it's a hardcover. Uh, so at twenty five hundred pounds, it's gonna upgrade to a. Uh, 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 oh wow! Yeah, yeah, they're doing pre orders right now. This looks fantastic. Holy shit! Uh, there's a bunch of other games by Odin's Beard, including uh, Rune Cairn. There's also some D&D 5th edition stuff that they have. Um, there's no news yet about a physical edition for pre-order for it on their website, but they will have updates. And I'm sure they'll email you and let you know. Uh, so there you go. They also have community copies. If you don't have enough money, go ahead and check them out. Uh, we shooting? Exactly. We shooting. Exactly. Fuck. Fuck it. Let's, let's roll in Derek in there, too. Hell yeah. We'll throw, we'll throw, we'll throw the whole squad in there. Hell yeah. All right, we deal in lead. Go ahead and check it out. Open Beards RPG. It looks fucking great. All right, moving on. Rambo, Total Recall, Pacific Rim, and other classic action movies are getting an official RPG adventures that you can utilize with D&D 5th Edition rules. So, the upcoming season of adventure from Everyday Heroes will be made up of eight adventures based directly on films from the 80s and 90s through to more modern releases. The 80s classics and the cinematic adventures from Everyday Heroes includes John Carpenter's Escape from New York, which has had a board game adaptation announced, the cult fantasy Highlander, and of course Sly Stallone's genre-defining Rambo. The 90s are being represented by Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, Total Recall, Jean-Claude Van Damme's vehicle Universal Sol Soldier, and the cult comic book adaptation The Crow, which is currently in line for a remake 
uh, though not with Jason Momoa attached to it anymore. And then into the Millennium, Guillermo del Toro's Mechs vs. Monsters movie, Pacific Rim, Kong Skull Island, as well, uh, are going to be turned into playable scenarios. Um, the cinematic adventures have been designed for Everyday Heroes, the upcoming RPG that serves as a spiritual successor to Dungeons & Dragons' third edition spinoff of D20 Modern. Set on modern-day Earth rather than a fantasy world, Everyday Heroes, like D20 Modern before it, will introduce a number of new elements to D&D's gameplay, including new subclasses, rules for using firearms and cover, and the ability to chase on foot or in vehicles. Original D20 Modern co-designer Jeff Grubb and producer Stan Brown are working on the standalone game alongside uh, Evil Genius' team, with the older game described as inspiration not duplication. Um, this is, like, absolutely wild, because a lot of these are going to have, like, each of these books are going to be 100 pages each, which is fantastic. They're going to include a full campaign set in the universe of each movie. Uh, Evil Genius Productions has said that the books will also include new rules and gameplay mechanics. On top of that, Pacific Rim and Kong Skull Islands will, uh, will be followed by an extended world book, uh, that will have a monster manual that provides additional detail in the universes for players to use as a complete setting for custom campaigns. Uh, they said that other premier franchises would receive similar uh, uh, treatment in the future. This is absolutely wild that this is happening, by the way. This is absolutely wild. Now, am I kind of sad that it's using the 5e system? A little bit, but you know what? I can get over it. Um, this is like... like Hi, having Highlander escape from New York. Here's a picture of the book. I'm going to go ahead and pop on over to right there. You can see right here the Pacific Rim book, the Highlander book, Escape from New York, The Crow, Rambo, Total Recall, Universal Soldier, King Kong Skull Island. I can totally see how these work right here. Like Pacific Rim, Highlander, Universal Soldier, and Kong Skull Island all live within like worlds where it makes sense where you can have a party playing stuff. These are the ones that I'm curious about. I'm very curious as to how the Crow, Total Recall, Escape from New York, and Rambo work within this situation. Because these are all very much like single people focused stories. The Crow is very much focused on one person. Escape from New York is focused on one person. Total Recall I can kind of see a little bit more. But like Rambo is about a Vietnam vet that deals with trauma. So it's wild. It's wild. Uh, thank you for the subscription, Dimples and Dice. I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm definitely going to check these out. I'm probably going to pick these books up because I really want to fucking see what they're about. Um, so I, I, I'm very, very interested in to see what happens with this. Uh, I, I can't believe that we live in a day and age where this is going on. But, you know, here we are. Here we are. Go ahead and check out, you know, go ahead and check out Evil Geniuses games with all of this stuff. Uh... They're saying, uh, Scott from Evil Geniuses, uh, Dave Scott, is saying that Everyday Heroes system will be perfectly balanced with the 5e rule system. So if you want to build a Highlander and throw them back into your favorite D&D setting, you can. Or if you want your cyborg-enhanced Universal Soldier to lay waste to the maximum security prison of New York, you can do that too. If you had a wisecracking character that owned a chainsaw and shotgun, you could plop them into your D&D game, no problem. Also, if you wanted Rambo to go monster hunting on Skull Island, that works as well. The Seasons of Adventure books will be offered as part of Everyday Heroes Kickstarter that is due to launch on May 17th. The Cinematic Adventures exclusive to the crowdfunding campaign. Each book will cost $20 with the full season bundled for $130. So that is eight books for $20 each. Uh, so getting it for $130, each book for $130 is a fucking steal. So definitely do check that out. That's going to be fucking wild. Absolutely wild that this is the day and age that we live in. Holy hell. Holy hell indeed. Wow. That is able everything that I have for Table Talk RPG News. So let's go ahead and roll this in. We are about uh, looking at this almost an hour in, and we are steamrolling through this. you love to see it. Let me get some more water because we have a big breaking news alert. Because the new doctor of the Doctor Who television series has been found. And it is none other than the Rwandan Fantastic actor from Sex Education, Nkudi Gatwa. Uh, I am very, very excited. Uh, it was released early this morning. This is breaking news. I had to add this into the news shuffle. Um, but the official Doctor Who Twitter account shared some news that Nkudi Gatwa is the new doctor. Nkudi Gatwa, is, uh, who was born in Rwanda, is the first non-white person to play the doctor. And until next year, when he becomes the star of the iconic sci-fi franchise, 
Um, he is best known for his role as Eric Ifong on Netflix's Sex Education, which I had just caught up with. Go ahead and check out um, check out uh, uh, Sex Education on Netflix. It is a fantastic, fantastic show. Uh, quoted as to saying, Gatwa uh, released a statement this morning. There aren't quite the words to describe how I'm feeling. A mix of deeply honored, beyond excited, and of course a little bit scared. This role and show means so much to so many around the world, including myself, and each one of my incredibly talented predecessors has handled that unique responsibility and privilege with the utmost care. I will endeavor my utmost to do the same. Um, Got was run the show will coincide with the return of Russell T. Davies, who rebooted the franchise in 2005 with Christopher Eccleston's deeply underrated, and I agree, deeply underrated, my favorite version of The Doctor. Uh... Uh, regarding Davies' return, Gottwell went on to say in a statement that the writer is almost as iconic as the Doctor himself. His work is dynamic, exciting, incredibly intelligent, and fizzling with danger. Russell Davies, meanwhile, had to say that Gatwa has the kind of talent that walks through the door, and it's so bright and bold and brilliant that you just stand back in awe. Gatwa has dialed a, dazzled us, seized hold of the Doctor, and has owned those TARDIS keys within seconds. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. What a wild time. What a wild time to, to be living where after many, many, many years of there just being old white British man playing the role of the doctor, the last two that we have was a woman and now we have a, a Rwandan man playing the doctor absolutely fantastic you absolutely love to see it i know that there are tons of my friends that are very excited i saw them freaking out on 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 twitter and i had to i had to just throw in some love because uh, this is huge news this is huge news i'm very excited i was never much of a doctor who fan uh my ex-fiance was massively massively into doctor who was a big fan of matt smith um me less as much but i saw all those whovians getting excited i had to throw a shout out so yeah congratulations in kudi gatwa uh fantastic actor check out his work on sex education uh playing a queer rwandan man in a small british town is no easy feat and he handles it so fucking well we have some other big casting news moving on to the world of the mcu jason statham has officially signed on with the mcu this is coming from sources at giant freaking robot who have never led us astray before uh trust and proven source has said that jason statham is the latest to join the mcu uh jason statham in the world of marvel has a lot of possibilities uh he is one of the world's largest uh action movie stars uh and especially being british with a shaved head um we can check off a few boxes of no of who we know Jason Statham will not be playing. Uh, he's definitely not playing Black Knight because we have Kit Harrington playing Black Knight. Uh, he's not going to be playing Merlin, uh, which there was a... Uh, we have a possibility of Merlin showing up at some point with the Midnight Suns, I'm thinking. Because it seems like we're going to be getting a Midnight Suns collaboration between Moon Knight, Blade, Black Knight, and then eventually Ghost Rider or Doctor Strange. I can't wait to see that. And he's probably not going to play Captain Britain. Um, uh, but... I would love to see him as Captain Britain, but there's another British superhero that we could possibly see him playing as, which is a personal favorite of mine, Union Jack. Union Jack is a uh, 90s uh, that it, like is a guy that like served in World War II in the Howling Commandos under uh, Captain America, and he became this like this like James Bond mixed with a uh, mixed with a Captain America type. Uh, a British agent, agent who served during World War One and World War II, uh, and I think Jason Statham could play that role specifically because he's not an aristocratic character. Uh, he's actually a working class background that has martial arts skills that kind of fits with Jason Statham's vibe very, very well. Um, he could also be playing an original character or some kind of government liaison. He could also be playing a villain. So who knows? Uh, Jason Statham uh, is definitely join the mcu though and i can't wait to see what he brings to it he's one of my favorite action movie stars i'm a big fan of his work in guy Ritchie's films as well as the transporter movie series uh and uh crank 
uh, if, if you're familiar with the Crank series. Uh, you know, they are considered to be garbage. I love them. Absolutely adore those fucking movies. Congratulations, Jason Statham. Um, and on a bit of sad news, we have Kenneth Welsh from Twin Peaks and Lodge 49 has passed away recently. Kenneth Welch was a prolific Canadian actor. He uh, appeared as the chess-obsessed supervillain Wyndham Earl in the second season of Twin Peaks. He's also worked in over 200 projects across a 50-year uh, career. Uh, he was born in Edmonton, Canada. He started as a stage actor, but he quickly transferred over to Canadian TV. He was in this Canadian ski comedy, Reno and the Dock, where he got noticed and moved his way to films. Uh... He's, his last film role was apparently in the Kids in the Hall revival, which is going to be showing up as well uh, in Amazon Prime. But he was more f uh, fondly known as appearing as a villain in Crocodile Dundee 2. He was in a Marlon Brando vehicle called The, the Freshman. Um, but he was also involved in Twin Peaks, X-Files, Stargate Atlantis, and more. Um, one of his most like celebrated roles uh, that in a series that is very, very underrated is where he played as the Sovereign Protector Larry Loomis in Lodge 49 on FX. Go ahead and check that out. It stars Wyatt Russell. It is a great, great, great show. Um, he popped up in a lot of different roles, various stuff like that. Go ahead and check him out. Uh, next in our news, uh, Fast 10. Uh, so uh, Justin Lin is out as director for Fast 10, or Fast X, the latest movie that's coming out in the Fast and Furious franchise. And instead, we have, speaking of Jason Statham, the director of the Transporter series as well as the Incredible Hulk, Louis Leterrier. Uh, he is taking the director's chair after Justin Lin had made a surprise departure from the movie. Uh, Leterrier, who beat out numerous candidates for the job, is Universal Pictures' first choice, and schedules are still being hammered out. He comes to the franchise with a wide array of experience. He is uh, he uh, expanded his directing career with two different movies. He he started with Transport 2 as well as Jet Li's Unleashed. Uh, he has also directed Now You See Me. Clash of the Titans, The Incredible Hulk. He also directed the Sasha Baron Cohen movie, The Brothers Gimsby. And then he turned to Netflix with two underrated, very well done television shows The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Rest in peace, Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. You were too good for Netflix. You were amazing, and they should have loved you. As well as Lupin, which talks about Arsene Lupin. Fantastic French series. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, this new movie is starring Vin Diesel, Charlize Theron, as well as adding newcomer Jason Momoa to the mix. Um, the screen, uh, Dan Mazzell wrote the screenplay with Justin Lin, uh, Vin Diesel, Neil Moritz, uh, Justin Lin, Jeff Kirschenbaum, and Samantha Vincent are the uh, producers as well. Uh, while the director's shirt was going on, main prediction was in Lumbo. This has uh, reported to cost the Universal upwards of $600,000 to $1 million a day with shooting not happening. On top of the financial pressures, Theron, Momoa, and Brie Larson are major players in other established franchises. Oh, yeah, Brie Larson is in this movie as well. Absolutely wild. Um, so... Uh, Fast X is originally envisioned as the first of a two-part conclusion to the Fast and Furious saga. Filmmakers behind the final chapter have contemplated splitting the feature into two parts. A source close to the shoot said, though, the production schedule at present would only accommodate the first film and a potential final pair. So Fast 10, Fast X might be the last Fast and the Furious movie that we see. It's an end of an era. I can't wait to see what they do with it. I love that series so much. Uh, speaking of a lovely series, that 90s show has shared its first look with returning stars. A spinoff series, That 90s Show, will feature a new generation of teenagers having fun during a different decade. Not everything is different about Wisconsin. Red and Kitty are now proud grandparents and will be returning in the show. And since the rest of the original cast was more than just all right, Netflix is bringing them back too. Most of the stars from That 70s Show will make guest appearances during the sequel show's debut season. Um, they shared the first official image of Red and Kitty, who look almost just as good as they used to during that 70s show. Um, they're clearly, it's Kurtwood Smith and Deborah Jo Rupp, Kurtwood Smith, who played the villain in uh, the uh, in RoboCop 1, and Deborah Jo Rupp, who was most recently in WandaVision, um, have been enjoying retirement and having their own kids out of the house, especially Red. Thank you, TTRPG, for the raid. Thank you so, so much. Uh, the official synopsis from Netflix is describing that 90s show. Uh, hello, Wisconsin. 
1995, and Leah Foreman, daughter of Eric and Donna, is visiting her grandparents for the summer, where she bonds with a new generation of Point Place kids under the watchful eye of Kitty and the stern glare of Red. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll never dies. It just changes clothes. The new image also includes uh, big news. Original stars Topher Grace, Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, Laura Prepon, and Wilmer Valderrama will reprise their That 70s Show's role with guest spots in the series. Their returns are not exactly a surprise. Neither is the exclusion of Danny Masterson, who played Hyde, who is currently facing trial for the Big R allegations. So yeah, that he was kicked out of the, the Netflix series The Ranch for that. Uh, I do not see him making a return in this whatsoever. Uh, the cast series regulars also include Ashley Alfderheide, Callie Alfderhada, Mace Coronel, Maxwell A.C. Donovan, Rain Doy, and Sam Morelos. Uh, it's going to be a 10-episode first season. It doesn't have an official release date, but that's more than all right. It gives us time to listen to Nirvana and dust off our old Pog collection. Now, our last news story for the day, Daniel Radcliffe. Images have been released of Daniel Radcliffe as his uh, turn as Weird Al Yankovic with the Roku original biopic Weird. Not only that, but they have included a trailer for us. So I'm going to be opening it up, letting us check that out, and then we're going to see what we think about this minute and two second trailer of Daniel Radcliffe as Weird Al Yankovic before we go ahead and take us on home and raid into another stream. What do y'all think? Let's go ahead and hit it. Oh, it seems like it's starting out just like a normal standard biopic. Like a big time tradition. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's about Madonna, right? Hope you guys are ready for this. Nope. It's Dan Radcliffe. Oh my god. Oh my god. Anyone got an accordion? Rain Wilson as well. Like a surgeon. Wild. What can I say? I'm full of surprises. Is that Madonna in the- this, this movie. This movie. Only on the Roku channel. I don't even know where to find the Roku channel. How do I find the Roku channel? How do I get- Do I have to get Roku to get the Roku channel? How do I see- Oh my god. That might be fun. You know what? You know what? I'm- I'm- <sighs> Fuck it. I love Weird Al Yankovic so much. Not bad, not bad. He looks great. He looks just like Weird Al. It's gonna be weird to see, like, I always love music biopics, but they're always so, like, weird to kind of see in the flesh. Um, it's, I don't know. Somebody give me your Roku channel subscription so I can watch this movie. I have Roku TV. It's just there. It's just there. Okay. Well, I might start a free subscription when it comes out just so I can watch this movie and then cancel it afterwards uh, because I definitely want to check this out. This is wild. This is absolutely wild. Do you know how wild this is? This is very wild. Um, I can't believe that we live in this day and age. This is happening. This is happening. All right. So we've talked about Weird Al Yankovic. We've talked about Fast X. We've talked about uh, Sue Grace being released with AEW. I think that is all I have for the news today. Uh, thank you so, so much for joining us on this Sunday afternoon. This episode is going to be going right up on YouTube, so if you missed it, then you can go ahead and check it out there. As well as all of our other programming goes up on YouTube. Uh, I've got a little bit of a backlog that I'm loading up there, but they should all be uploaded this week. Go ahead and check it out. We have other great shows like Camp Half-Blood, Crack the Sky Alpha, and our Kingdom Hearts Interstitial war uh series which is coming to an end we have two more episodes so be sure to tune into that friday 7 30 p.m eastern time as well as yaziba's bed and breakfast we have a couple more episodes of that on thursday um rest in peace george perez rest in peace neil adams comic great artists go ahead go read some george perez pinned uh comics including avengers versus jla all this other stuff uh fantastic artist shout out george perez he was a uh he was a a a, a hero to many uh and then neil adams as well just a a fantastic fantastic both of them dominant artists uh especially george perez being fellow borqua like fucking shout out 
to the homie. Um, and shout out to you. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, check out Leslie. We'll be back this Tuesday for uh, Comfort Sickle. There's currently a poll going on on our Patreon to figure out what she's playing. So if you want to go uh, decide what she's playing, go ahead and check out our Patreon. Uh, and uh, see, she's got Chinatown Detective Agency, Stardew Valley, Elden Ring, and Detention up for a vote. So you can go ahead and check that out out as well and then this wednesday we have good game well played coming back and then this saturday we have a episode of late night comfort sorry that we missed you this past week but bully table goth was feeling under the weather so we'll get him back into the circulation here soon other than that that's it for me my name is wes franks i'm the creative director and founder of caring comfort studios thank you so much for watching us and uh go ahead and hold on to your butts because we are going to be raiding into Huntsman's Hydra as they are going through their second episode of Fire in the Dark, a Blades in the Dark campaign. So go ahead and check them out, and we shall see you soon. Do not forget, take care of yourself, drink some water, take your medications, and comfort comes soon. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.